This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. The case against Diddy, it, it continues to pile up. As of right now, no charges have been made and uh, Diddy has been denying uh, everything until, of course, a video comes out and it says, oh, shit, uh, sorry, I need God, I had counseling, blah, 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 me, 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 me. We all have seen the video. But let's go back before all of this. Let's go all the way back to 1996, the murder of Tupac Shakur. At that point in time, there was the East Coast, West Coast rivalry going on between Bad Boy Records and Death Row Records. A lot of it was, uh, you know, it, it was for almost entertainment, it seemed, until Tupac got shot. And then Biggie got shot. And the rumor had always been, well, it was, you know, somehow some sort of hit was ordered back and forth. But uh, unfortunately, uh, nothing ever got that far. However, in the last year, uh, Dwayne Keefe D. Davis uh, has been charged with the murder of Tupac after bragging about being in the car, uh, after bragging about ordering the hit on Tupac. But he's also said in many times, and the name does come up in the affidavits, Diddy, that Diddy had put something out there, $1 million bounty basically on the head of Suge Knight and Tupac Shakur. All these years later, all the stuff coming out about Diddy seemed a little more plausible. Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program. Are we going to see something here? Is this just kind of another, you know, we're poking old news or, or is this a revival of that idea that maybe Diddy did in fact have a hand at uh, the murder of Tupac and the possible uh, assassination of Suge Knight as well? Got a lot more smoke in this big forest fire, don't we? Mm-hmm. And, and, and therein lies the challenge. More smoke, more smoke, more smoke. And we know it's a forest fire, but we can't seem to keep snuffing it out. And I think one of the challenges that they're going to have on this one is what the challenge has been the entire time, is getting people, one, that are credible. You know, having gang members tell tell you know, a jury that they did something, okay. And even getting multiple gang members. Um, so I think it's going to come down to evidence, you know, mm -hmm. people have got to give hard evidence on this one in order to actually get the fire, um, to justify the smoke because without good hard evidence, I think they're going to keep, we because the other thing too, is you're going to have to have people that heard confessions, saw confessions, knew something was going on in law enforcement. And I'm not saying people were paid off, but someone so there's a reason why more things didn't happen when they were accused of happening. Mm -hmm. That's going to force people to reverse their thought process, reverse decisions. So there, there's a lot of, uh, there's just a lot of weeds that need to be pulled on this one in order to start um, planting some grass. And, yeah, I'm just wondering if, uh, if there's already been too much damage to the whole case of all the, the people that, that could have at one point in time spoke. I mean, everyone in the car is dead that shot at Tupac, except for Keefe D. He's the only one that's alive still to this day. Uh, the story is that he had uh, instructed Orlando Anderson to pull the trigger, his, uh, his uh, cousin or nephew, I believe. Uh, and uh, that's how that all went down. Uh, I don't know if he was going after the million-dollar bounty, if he ever got the million-dollar bounty. Um, I, I don't believe so. Uh, but it, it's, it's an investigation that really didn't go all that far. Uh, back in those days, I know they'd reopened it here and there. And, and at one point they were kind of going down it and there was some misconduct allegations again uh, by law enforcement. And they put a pause on that uh, more modern investigation, if you will. But again, you have so many people who you could have talked to that are no longer alive. Um, you have some investigators that have uh, some questionable history. Um is there just too much you know, we're talking about smoke, but is there too much mud in the water here to ever really get an answer? Or do we already know the answer that it, it well, we know who shot, but we don't necessarily know where that came from. And we, are we ever going to connect those dots back to Diddy other than Keefe D saying, yeah, I did it because of this. So I have a guess. <laughs> My guess is that, like you said, the more the water is so muddy and so convoluted, and the credibility is so all over the place. But people, you, you know, have the court of public opinion, you know, which is probably convicting them on this point. 
But what we I've seen in past in situations like this and cases like this is I think um, we're going to probably see some um, money laundering charges or something financial here. Mm -hmm. um, because if, if you, it, when you have a convoluted case where you have a potential murder um, charge and things like that, and you, and you have this kind of evidence and this kind of a shaky credibility, generally there's a lot of other things going sideways in someone's life. Mm -hmm. And since you're dealing with a lot of money, a lot of people, and also, and if you're talking claims of being, having payoffs and hits and things like that, that takes money laundering yeah. um, to let those things happen. So I'm, I'm guessing that they're not just focusing on all the smoke around the assassination potential here uh, that happened and the murders, but they're going to focus on the more hard evidence that'll be easier to track and uncover, I think, on the money side. If we can find that, I think that's probably the only path we have. If we can find a, so a path too. of money from Diddy uh, to Keefe D or to someone uh, that was transacted shortly after the murder, then you might have a case here. Uh, it's just a matter of can we find that? Is that out there? How how did they launder it? Is it something that was trackable or traceable? Um, I mean, speak to that. I mean, are there that many years ago? We're talking almost thirty years ago now. Um, so that, that, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to take people. Yeah, and I, I think at this point, since the house of cards is crumbling a little bit and people are talking, what they're doing is they're getting a, a little nugget here. And so, what's really good is even a nugget from a, a former gang member or a gang member about how they got this or where it was dropped or who said this. Um, that's going to, it takes a while to kind of piece all those things together. Mm -hmm. But what's good on that is the credibility of the gang member doesn't even matter for the jury. It's like, all right, here's the money flow. And so, yeah, it happened a while ago, but remember, arcs of behavior don't just stop. Mm -hmm. And so if someone was laundering money back then, the likelihood of people doing bad things with money now is really high. You know, why would they switch? Why would they stop? Because it was never... It never hindered them in the past. Yeah. And so I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to probably build a case around that uh, as well as those other things. And a case around that can have a lot of tendrils. And then if you have someone that you think is connected, you're going to have a conversation with that individual that could be a key witness that you're going to give immunity to to actually pro to say these types of things and give more evidence and states and turn states evidence. So there's a lot of moving parts in there when you actually have a large time frame, a large amount of money, and a large amount of people that have multiple potential crimes that they've been involved in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they're probably just trying to lock in uh, and they're prioritizing. You know, yeah. what's, what's most heinous of the prosecution, you know, uh, of what they've done or being accused of doing, but what's the most prosecutable? Because mm -hmm. um, those things, a lot of times, might not be aligned. Sure. And so, so they're assessing. So the prosecution office right now is probably assessing all that. Yeah, there's so much to do uh, with this case. There's there's so many cases it looks like that are going to I be going so. aiming directly at Diddy. Uh, it, it's it's going to go on for the rest of his life. I'm, I'm sure. Um, and it's not just Diddy; it's his whole network. Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah. They're 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 going to take down an entire network uh, and you know a sector of the industry mm -hmm. uh, for how they did their business. There is no doubt. Yeah, I I agree. It'll be fascinating to watch. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.